takes the snap, so Brown hits the quarterback. Uh, gentlemen, how was your weekend? Weekend? I mean, it's Wednesday. I mean, well, that's, we, we, that's we, a we big weekend. For two days, we delayed so. Well, that was an extended weekend. Shoot. I don't know, I don't know what I did this weekend. Well, no scoop what the last two do? days, so you haven't, you've had a long one. Well, I did come down uh, last Friday and visit with the Central Warriors here at the Bellasinos, and thank you all for buying a bunch of bubble gum, guys. <laughs> I appreciate that. Rickers, uh, eat for bubble the Bubble gum next machine sales was bubble. up this week. <laughs> bubble gum machine sales was up, wasn't it, Zane? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, gentlemen, uh, regular season's finally over with. Uh, playoffs are getting ready to start. We're going to recap last week's games, talk about our playoff games this week coming up. And uh, next week we're going to have some end-of-season awards that we're going to hand out recognize some different people so uh, that's an episode you definitely want to catch uh, next week. Oh, Alabama lost this week. Yes, Alabama. A uh, roll tide. <laughs> the Cowboys lost again. The Cowboys it? lost again. Who day? No, not who day. Who them? No, who, who ain't. How probably. about them? How about them Cowboys? <laughs> there you go. Go ahead. All right. Uh, we'd like to thank our sponsors, CarQuest Auto Parts, located in Hurley, Virginia, Hurley Pharmacy, uh, the Economy Drug, located in the Plaza in Grundy, Virginia. Wooden Horse Grill, Grundy Auto Sales, Buchanan Therapy Services, and Buchanan General Hospital. And as always, Bellasinos, uh, where we film our show and where they provide us with all the food. <laughs> all right. Uh, with that being said, gentlemen, we're going to take a look at last week's, uh, this past week's games. And uh, Coach Krieger, I've got, got the scores for us. Give me that paper. Huh? I thought you had them. No. I got the scores. I want to know what order we picked. Oh, you want to know what order we picked, man. All right. Just want you all to know I went 14-0. and 0. <clears throat> Yes, Coach Krieger had a four. Had to to tie Coach Tester. Very impressive. So, Patrick Henry at Northwood. It was Patrick Henry 36, Northwood 0. And I think it rained the whole entire Thursday, didn't it? It did. Um, yes. Still, and that was, I think, one of the reasons they moved that game up was to try to avoid the rain. Avoid the coldness. And, uh, well, there's one thing about it, they didn't avoid the rain. I would rather avoid the rain than the coldness. <laughs> well, it was cold on Friday. How cold was it? Cold. Okay. Just check. We got too big of a crowd this week, so I can't. Can't elaborate. Yeah. All right. You're under, All right, we got a microscope. Yeah. Chill Howie. <laughs> And who did they play? Holston. Holston. Holston, big time game. Right? But guess what? I know what you was going to say. 16 nothing at halftime. <clears throat> Holston. What does the halftime score mean? It don't mean nothing. It don't mean nothing. But, but I think what I always say, though, about Holston. Yeah, what do you say about Holston? This one? pretty good. <laughs> Holston, too. Holston, pretty good. Uh, Holston hey. showed that they were pretty good, too. Yeah, pretty good, too. Well, Chill Howie, 30 <laughs> unanswered points in the second half. Uh, but you know, going into halftime, they had to have have some major concern in Holston going in there, sixteen to nothing. Now, hats off to Holston, uh, surprising a lot of people. Seemed like week in and week out this year. Not pistol, everybody but pistol. All right, next game, Twin Springs guys, Rye Cove and Twin Springs, and it was Twin Springs 34, Rye Cove 24. Another big win for Warner. I thought Twin Springs could get in with that win. I did too. That's where I was at with it. So they finished six and four, right? Yeah, and, and Honecker got in. Yeah. So I thought that they were both Honecker out. Uh, the, I think they had 16.9 uh, power rating points, and Honecker had 17.1 power rating points. Uh, but still, was, great year for uh, Twin Springs. I mean, Oh yeah, going from a, a one-win season to, uh, to winning those six games, and and, and all Thomas, Hall ever did was uh, punch that ticket to go to Patrick Henry and play again. <laughs> yeah, uh, but you know, get, you take a look at that. Uh, 
Twin Springs game, that game had a lot of implications on some teams mm -hmm. making it or not making it into playoffs, and mm -hmm. one of those teams was Hurley. Yeah. Uh, so, Ryko gets that win. Now that could be Hurley at that eight, 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 eight spot right now instead of uh, yeah. instead of Honecker. And another interesting point about that is uh, that Ryko had the lead uh, in the second half, and then uh, Twin Springs managed to get uh, score another touchdown and seal the deal there. So. It was uh, that game had a lot of playoff uh, implications on it. All right, next game, J.I. Burton, the Raiders, Thomas Walker, forty-four to six. You surprised? No. Uh, I tell you, Thomas Walker's team in, in the playoffs right now, and, and no offense, Thomas Walker, but their team is that's stepping back into the playoffs right now. They're not. Uh, they're not playing. They're too not playing well very right well now. right now at the end of the season. You're not the way that you'd want to be playing. I don't know if it's due to injury out. or just. I mean, boys, well, it's just it's tough. It's a long football season, and it don't matter how you play at the first of the year. It's how you finish. Is that what they say? That's exactly right. And they can help themselves if they play Southwest Virginia teams more than going to uh, to uh, Tennessee. Get some of those teams. I mean. Points wise. Points wise, yeah. yeah. Oh, all right, we got George With and Roll Retreat. Uh, George With, George With rolls uh, forty-two to twenty-one, I think, if I can find it. No, nope, forty-five to twenty-one. George With looks like they're finishing the year pretty strong. Who, who did they play? Roll Retreat. Roll Retreat. Jamie Hughes. <laughs> All right, we got our next one is uh, Castlewood and Eastside. <coughs> Eastside, uh, let me find it here. I think it was 32 or 42 to 32, if I'm not mistaken. Still can't find it. There it is, 42 to 32 Eastside. Over. Castlewood. Castle. Castlewood. Well, another shout out to, you know, uh, the Whitey Kid. They finally got the Whitey Kid back that's been out all year. He signed did. That was, the, that was, I think that was the turning point. Well, game, I'm glad uh, you didn't know that because you picked Castlewood. Well, I didn't know well, that. Well, Castlewood was playing pretty well. I don't think it was a crazy thing to pick Castlewood. They, they're playing fairly well. Uh, East Side, though, you said all year long that they're. Especially with him uh, back, they're dangerous. Yeah. Uh, I don't think he's did they get in the game. playoffs? No, they did not. East side did not get in the playoffs. <laughs> yes, East side is playing host in the playoffs. Yes. Well, he just said no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, East said, Oh, yeah, East side is playing. I'm sorry. I thought you was getting ready to say something sarcastic there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are. It actually, it's a, a rematch. All right. Yeah. We have next game Hurley at Twin Valley. Hurley 40, Twin Valley 6. And it uh, wasn't really a surprise to me as far as, you know, uh, we expected Hurley to do do what they just what they did with their offensive line and I think they had another three hundred yards uh, rushing again and I think four hundred and seventy one yeah. total offensive yards against Twin Valley. Four hundred and seventy one total yards for the Rebels uh, on the evening. Uh, Tyler Young, Matt Blankenship, John Matt Justice. Uh, Chad Justice scored twice, those other fellas scored once, and uh, Austin Bobcat Boyd got in the end zone as well, 61-yard touchdown run. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. Twin Valley's only score came uh, uh, on a touchdown run by Xavier Ward. Twin Valley finishes 2-8 and eight on the season. Uh, got most of the players back. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what they do next year. And Hurley State, well, 5-5. Five and, five. Uh, yeah. and they graduated five and five. 20 of them. And uh, Hurley's, Hurley's going to be losing some valuable players uh, on both sides of the football. He's going to lose a lot of good linemen. Yeah. All right, next, Ridgeview. Who did they play? Ridgeview. They played the Honecker Tigers, and it was 61-14. to 14. Uh, Yeah, it was all Ridgeview uh, from the oh. – Get go there. <laughs> I mean, not from the beginning. It wasn't. How many yards did the Atkins have? I have no idea. I'm it not was sure a lot. about that. 
I don't have his stats here. I was looking for him, but I don't have him. I mean, we had extra time. You had extra time to get that this week, yep. and you don't have him. <clears throat> yep. All right, next game. Why Central at Nelson Memorial Field. Why is 47, the mighty wave, zero. Uh, C.J. Crabtree, once again, uh, running wild. Uh, big road win for, uh, for Wise. And they go into the playoffs now, eight and two, right? Eight and two. Guys, I think, you know, C.J. Crabtree set the, uh, set the uh, Wise Central, all Wise Central school records rushing Friday night. I think he set uh, the career rushing, the single season rushing, and most consecutive 100 yard games. So, uh, wow. And he's a junior, right? He's a junior, and, uh, and, and guys, he's been doing that all season. And, and not only him, but the other two backs have been vital too in the offensive line. You know, we were talking about the yardage they've been racking up. And uh, I think that's been the key for us this year is, is, is being able to, to have different weapons in that offensive line, uh, uh, being able to do what they've been doing. Um, we're going to have to do a lot of that this week to keep the ball out of there. Who do y'all play this week? <laughs> <laughs> Big R, baby. Who you got, man? Big R going to Norton. I like I wonder who you're going to pick. They're going to Wise. I wonder who you're going to pick in that. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> make some people mad. I will. <laughs> All right, next game, Nairs and Perry McClure. It's Nairs 47 or 41, Perry McClure 7. Nah, the game was never in no. question. I don't think anybody. And you know, Nairs is they're playing these, their schedule and beating these teams. I mean, I know some of these teams are not maybe great, but they're beating them like they're supposed to beat them. Yeah. So I'm I'm still got them up there to playing with Galax here at the end of the year and that one was it one C one C in the finals. Well, it was one C from top to bottom. It's, it's <laughs> way better than one D in my opinion. I think you could take a five team. In, in one C right now, and it would be a good game with the one C. And I agree with you 100 percent. Region one D. Yeah. All right, now we come to the big R. How about Sage Webb this weekend? Big game, big game. 59 Richlands, 21 Virginia High, and Sage Webb had a monster. Game. Uh, 186 yards rushing, uh, three touchdowns, uh, caught four passes, total I think 59, 60 yards, uh, and a score. And Rich Lynch uh, took care of Virginia High. Uh, tornado, six and four. That's probably a little bit better than what most of us thought. Try boys. Six and four. Y'all go back to the what third show. Well, 500 and some yards offense for Rich Lynch, uh, is the reason for Wise to be concerned. Seems like Big R might be peaking at about the right well, time. Well, you've got to look. Uh, the Big R, Wise, they, they're they in a good situation. They're in, they're in the good side of the bracket because you don't have to play the G-Men. <laughs> still think G-Men's playing some pretty good ball right now. And you but do. we're still in the number one side of the bracket, which is Ridgeview. I'm not. <laughs> so. Boys, you done. That's the bracket you wanted to be in. Yeah, Plus, Graham, Graham is the state champions. Right. And only one team has beat them, and that is the Union Bears. Did you pick Richland's beat? Did you not pick Richland's beat? I did. Did you pick Richland's beat? I did. You Why did. are you sitting over here? Well, because the formula the ended up <laughs> coming back is Graham and Richland's is my number one, and I put in the top five Union at my number six. I believe we've, I believe we've stumped him before stumped the creek. <laughs> Imagine that. Uh, All right, what else we got? Taswan Lebanon. Taswan Lebanon. Lebanon was coming off that high off of uh, only being getting beat for Richland seven nothing the week before at halftime. Uh, we talked about Sage Webb having a great game. Gavin Nunley, 173 yards, and he passed for 165 for Taswan. And Taswan 40 uh, and Lebanon 24. And guys, Lebanon's playing some pretty good ball here at the end, and they've got, I think, everybody back. Uh, that's a yeah, that's a bright sign. For yes, uh, they they struggled for the most part, but once they got that right before the week week before they got that win, they started seeing like pretty things good. Up. And uh, even though they finished one and nine, uh, you know uh, Logan Smith, I think uh, had a had a good night for them uh, for the Pioneers. 
all those players for the most part are coming back. So as you said, uh, Lebanon could be uh, a much improved team come next year. Anybody else? All got? right. Yeah, we've got Marion at Graham, Graham 46, Marion 7. And I thought I'd seen Coach Palmer post something about these seniors, that they are the all-time winning of team at no, at, yeah, at they've Graham. won more games at Graham than any other senior class has. Oh, okay. And I was wanting to see that. Uh, well, another uh, note there I'll say in regards to Patrick Henry, congratulations to him finishing the season 10-0. <laughs> um, I think it was probably eight or nine years ago when Malibu Mark was over there and they were 0-10. Oh, yeah. And uh, they came a long way, and I think it's the first 10-0 season they've had since about like 97 or something like that to Patrick Henry. So congratulations to the Rebels. All right, Coach Palmer says the seniors have 44 wins in four years. That's a lot. That's a lot. A lot. I mean, that's, and they have a state championship under their belt. And they could, you know, if you look at this, they could finish 40 with 49 wins if they run the table here in the playoffs. Oh, yeah, and boy, they easily can. They easily can. All right, we got Union. <coughs> The Bears, the Bears, they beat John Battle 54 to 7, and I'm sure the Polar Express was on it. Yeah. I don't know how many yards he had, but he probably had a lot. Well, uh, well, you look at what he does off, on the offensive side of the ball, Polly A. And then goes over. And then comes, and I heard he had over 120 tackles on the defense side of the ball. So, I mean, that's he pretty ain't tough. slacking off. Yeah, he's, he's not one of these players that's going to run the ball, get my name in the paper, and then take a break on right. defense. He, he don't do that. Mm -hmm. No. What about no. That? <laughs> what about that? Yeah. <laughs> that's true, man. Uh, well, uh, that's all of them, boys. All right. That's all the games we got for last week. Uh, and I went 14-0. and 0. Our peak performance of the week, uh, we're going to recognize Mr. Uh, Gavin Nunley from Tazewell. 173 yards rushing and 165 <coughs> yards passing. Um, I mean, that's – what more can you say? Go ahead and give them some praise, Gregor. Tazzle. Hey, boy, they played good. <clears throat> so, Tazzle 73. They got, don't they have most of theirs back? Uh, first win in season for Tazzle since 2008. And I, it's, I, I'm not sure I'm going to say uh, it's been several years since they've been in the playoffs. I'm, I'm afraid to give a date on that. I'm not sure when the last time they were Who they play? Uh, we'll get to that here in just a second. I've got it listed here. But, uh, I, you know, G, G man. <laughs> okay. Uh, so Tazzle's uh, uh, Gavin Dunley is our uh, CarQuest Auto Parts peak performance of the week. Congratulations, Gavin. Uh, leading the Bulldogs to seven to three, and they're back in the playoffs. So congratulations to them. All right. Up next, we have our uh, big talk segment brought to you by Wooden Horse Grill, located in Hurley, Virginia. Stop by and check out the Wooden Horse Grill. Food so good, make your tongue want to slap your brains out. Uh, stop by and check them out over there at the Wooden Horse Grill. This week, gentlemen, big talk segment. Uh, usually have to search the headlines to find one. This one wasn't too hard to find. It's right uh, up the road. Yeah, I knew when I saw it that it was the big talk segment of the week. And uh, CYB also knew as well. Uh, this week, uh, our Big Talk segment is going to be about a special player of the week that we have here, uh, Special Bellasino's Player of the Week. And, uh, Coach, I'm going to turn it over to you before we get any further into Big Talk. All right. Guys, you know, I, I've been around this kid for the last four years, been teaching at Hurley. And, uh, you teach. Been, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the... And the uh, and coaching, coaching a couple years ago before I resigned, I actually coached this kid the first two years. I can actually say uh, he has not missed a day of practice four years. He's always there. He's always around these teammates. Uh, uh, you couldn't ask for a better kid. And just the way he finished it off up at Twin Valley the other night and with the class act on both sides of the ball with, with Hurley and Twin Valley, Coach Cooper and Coach uh, Ward of Twin Valley, uh, got this kid into the end zone, and it's, it's, it was his first varsity touchdown. And you know, talking a little bit about Austin, uh, uh, Austin's a special kid. He's he, he's autistic, but uh, like I said, he's one of the most loving kids, supportive kids that you could ever be around. And uh, it was just a special, special moment for uh, 
all the community, the Hurley community. The Rebel Nation. The Rebel Nation and, and just and Twin Valley also, just the, yeah, the county the in general. Broadcast it, booth it, booth it, was, booth. it was a special one. So. The broadcast, broadcast booth. Broadcast booth, that's what I like to call it. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the broadcast booth up there. Uh, it was, I, 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 noticed, I noticed when he called timeout, uh, I was thinking, what's what's Coach calling timeout for? You know, I, 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 you know the game was already in hand and uh, uh, you know, look back out there, and then uh, Austin, uh, excuse me, Bobcat, uh, broke that one, a 63, 64 yard touchdown run. And uh, I don't think there was anybody in the place that wasn't cheering at that. At that well, it looked like run. he was the fastest person on the field. He was, he was fast, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody strapped a rocket to his back and just lit it, it looked like. Uh, but it was, a, it was a good moment. Uh, so let's go ahead and get this young man up here. Come on up here, Mr. Austin. Congratulations, buddy. Congratulations, Austin. Well, man, I, first thing I want to do is yep. ask you, what did it feel like to score that touchdown? Feels pretty good. Felt good. Yep. Good. Do, you, uh, do you thank them boys that's up in front of you? Yeah. Paving the way for you? Yeah. Good deal. Well, I, I know I've seen it on uh, seen it on Facebook, and seen you getting carried off the field, man. That, that must have been a good feeling. Yep. Good deal. Hey, Austin, what, I know you carried about, what, three times that night? Yeah. First two times you got a couple yards. Yeah, I uh, know. You ran hard, but you got hit pretty hard too. Didn't you? <laughs> but you just got right back up, got in the hole, and went ahead and did it again. What did yeah. it feel like when uh, you busted open there for 64 yards? It felt pretty good though. Well, they wasn't nobody gaining on you, I can tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> I want to know what uh, play did Coach Cooper call for you? Can you remember? To uh, no. <laughs> Just get the ball and run behind these big hog yeah. bodies, ain't it? Yeah. Coach Cricker asked me a question earlier, and I didn't have the answer to it. Maybe maybe he does. The question you was going to ask him earlier. What was that? About him carrying the ball. Oh, uh, boys, it looked like when you busted it up through our Coach Cooper, Cooper should have gave you about 15 carries yeah. that game. Oh, yeah. yeah. You should have got a lot more carries than that one or three. You'll take it, though, won't you? Yeah. You'll take it. So. Well, babe, we're proud of you. Yeah, and, we're proud uh, of you. You couldn't, like you said, that hole opened up big, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, I think something that uh, a, lot, a, lot of, a lot of people can look at what you did and be inspired by it. But the thing that, the touchdown run aside from that, the thing that I find most impressive is that you practice Every four day. years and you don't miss a day of practice. Uh, yeah. uh, that doesn't happen much anymore. That's commitment. That says a whole lot. It meant you was worthy of that moment too. Shorty, you deserved it. Yeah. Well deserved, buddy. Congratulations and uh, appreciate you, you coming on. And let him stay up here with us. Yeah. Okay. Um, with that being said, right we also uh, would like to recognize our second Belsino's Player of the Week. And uh, once again, I go back and, and, and thank Wooden Horse Grill for that big talk segment there. Uh, it was one of those moments that you just had to be there to really appreciate it. But if you didn't see it, you can check it out on WCYB, and uh, it is available on the Hurley Rebel uh, Facebook page, so you can check it out there. Uh, each week this time, we recognize our Belsino's Player of the Week. And uh, this week, we're honoring a group of young men who've been here before. And uh, once again, I'm going to let you take this one because you got the stats on it. All right. Well, Coach, you know, I don't only have the stats on them. I've been around these guys for four years and uh, coached them for two years. Uh, I know what a quality group of young men they are. Uh, we're having the Hurley offensive line as their uh, Belsino's Player of the Week. Uh, they finished the season this year with 3,019 yards rushing and 300, and averaging 301.9 yards per game. So when you throw them numbers out there, you don't you don't see numbers like that come along often. And like I said, this was a special group. We knew this year, most of them being seniors. I think all of them seniors. All of them seniors? No, I'm not. All right, I got one that's not a senior. But uh, like I said, we knew what a, what, what a season it was going to be for them and, and uh, just an awesome performance. And uh, when I had these guys before, I think they they uh, they had to play a back seat. You know, they're freshmen, a little bit of sophomore year. I think some of them may have played a lot their sophomore year, but they had to take a back seat, and they really worked hard and got to this level where they're at. And like I said, it, it paid off for them. And uh, just, you know, again, 3,019 yards rushing. And 
I don't know, split that between three or four backs. That's just that's a, that's a quality performance for the season. And we're going to have those guys up here right now. The offensive line, if we can get them all up here around Mr. Boyd, and y'all come on up. We probably won't be able to squeeze them in here. Congratulations, Congratulations boys. Bill. Big year. The emphasis on the word big. <laughs> <laughs> Get them all in here. Get them all in there, Pip. Go. Just suck your bellies in, boys. You'll be all right. All right, guys. Hey, uh, like I said, uh, finish off, finished off a great year, uh, great season, and uh, just talk about what it was like to for y'all all to play together this year and, and have the type of performance that you had. Any one of these, I don't care. It's honestly just a huge experience. I enjoyed this whole year playing against. People we all know and stuff, playing with them. It's real, a lot of fun. Good deal. Go ahead, Jacob. It's pretty cool getting to play with these guys for four years. Hey, my stuff ain't more than that. Uh, definitely going to miss it more than what I did. It went by a lot faster than what I thought it would. But it was definitely an experience. You know what they always say? We always told you. When it's over, I wish you'd go back and put them on one more time. And, uh, I know you guys are going through that, but like I said, you quality bunch of guys. And uh, uh, talk about uh, your preparation and, and what you went through, the hard work you put through. I mean, 3,019 yards rushing, guys, that's, uh, that's, that's a lot to account for. And John, they talk a little bit about what you went through four years to get to this point. Uh, for four years, we lifted the weights in the summer, you know, worked out, sweated in the hot sun. And then when season starts, today, we don't take a break. We're pushing a sled almost every day. I mean, get better each day. And it ain't no easy task, you know, to be get 3,000 yards. So in the games, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit here. Uh, I want you to talk a little bit about your offensive line coach, which you might know pretty well. So talk about a little bit about how he's he's helped you along and stayed on your case and been on your hind end, because I know he has. Uh, Dad's like coach everybody else. He may not want to say it, but he's tougher on me. But I appreciate what he does for all of us. I'll say that here, too. You know. well, like I said, he's looked like he's put his work in with, with the, the type of career y'all had and definitely the type of season that y'all had. Coach, y'all got anything cool? I know uh, running the wing tee is uh, a lot of teams don't like to do it because it's not flashy, it's not fancy. Uh, but, you know, you guys have done it in the past with, with Coach here, and Coach Cooper came in, and he, he stayed committed to it as well. Uh, how confident y'all, I mean, you run, the, you run the same stuff for three and four years. How confident do you become in running those plays by the time you're senior? You get to where when you coach, you sleep. When you coach your eyes at night to go to sleep, you can see it in your head. <laughs> Pretty simple. Isn't it? That's true. You just like breathing. You're doing a down step in your sleep. Then you wake up in bed. Lockdown, kick out. Huh? Yeah. Lockdown, kick out. Well, I'm gonna. My question is, is um, I know I'm gonna. I work with him, and he's one of my good friends. Is uh, how did uh, Coach Church impact you? As him being a lineman and him coaching you last year and. Uh, uh, I know he takes real pride in coaching line, and he was very proud of you all this year, too. I, I think he felt like he did a pretty good job with this. You can tell he's very, he's really into it, and that, that makes a world of difference. And you can just see his excitement when he was doing it. Because I know every time we come around, he said, well, how'd Hurley do? How, how many yards they have? Because, you know, when you see them yardage, that's on you all. You know, you going back talking with Coach Church, uh, he was a lineman coach for me, I don't know, four or five years, I know, of, off and on. And uh, when, you, when you talk about fundamentals and you talk about detail, he is very detailed, he's very fundamentally sound, and he's one of the best, you know, he's one of the best lineman coaches around here. And uh, as far as, you know, and him developing the foundation and, and what y'all got to do, and then uh, Coach Cooper and Coach John Paul, your dad coming along and kind of following, doing what, some of the same stuff he does. I know it's been a great help, and because uh, I know what type of player, what type of player, person, and coach that Coach Church was, and uh, I know he played a big part in your guys' success. 
So, but uh, um, anyway, congratulations to you guys, and uh, uh, maybe y'all can uh, uh, just reminisce with each other out here a little bit and enjoy the times, because like we said, you don't get it back. Hopefully, y'all, some of y'all might be trying to go to the next level. So, uh, uh, but anyway, congratulations, you guys, and uh, appreciate you guys coming on. Welcome to the old timers club. Yeah. <laughs> Has been. Has yeah. been. All right, we'll be back right after these messages. All right, folks, welcome back to the show. Uh, we'd like to thank uh, Economy Drug, located in the Grundy Plaza, for uh, this segment of the show, Did You Know? Uh, brought to you by the Economy Drug, located in Grundy Plaza. All right, this week's Did You Know? Did you fellas know that the first televised professional football game took place in 1939? It was actually a fairly big spectacle. Uh, it was pro football, and it was the first ever broadcast, and it appeared on 500 television sets in America. Come a long way, haven't we? Why you mention that last week? No, I didn't mention that. Oh. <laughs> 500, that's about how many TV screens you got here at Bell oh, yeah. that. Yeah. Uh, the first ever one was broadcast in 1939 and appeared on 500 TV sets. Uh, here's another interesting did you know fact about football. Uh, if you talk to a mathematician, of which none of us are, and you ask them what is the shape of a football, you hear people say, well, that it's football shaped or whatever. That's kind of how we use it. A mathematician would call the football shape a prolate spheroid. A prolate hemorrhoid. <laughs> a prolate <Wait>. spheroid. <laughs> Nothing to do with hemorrhoids. <laughs> Uh, but if you ask him that, he would know what you're talking about. Most other people just call it a, uh, just say it's football shaped. But the next time somebody asks you, tell them it's Preparation prolate. H. It's prolate spheroid. Preparation H. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it for Did You Know? But uh, we'd like to thank uh, uh, the folks down at Economy Drug for sponsoring our Did You Know segment. All right, up next is the time that we wait each week. <laughs> we await with bated breath for this moment every week. And this is the uh, time of the week that we do our Stump the Craig. And Stump the Craig is brought to you by Grundy Auto Sales, located in Grundy, Virginia. Stop by and check out the fine folks at Grundy Auto Sales. All right. Uh, each week we are given a question, and this question was delivered by Brinks Armored Truck. And uh, we have now received it. It's been in a bank vault for the last seven days under armed security. And I understand, according to my inside information here, that this one here has been especially guarded tight. So this must be a very good question. Uh, and I now have it in a hermetically sealed envelope and I'm about to open it. You have not seen it. I have not. I have not read it. Neither have you. Pistol. 
you have an either. All right, pistol shook his head this way. All right, so here we go. I'm going to open it. And let's see what we got here. Ah, here's the question. This is a good one. Oh, it's regarding Mance cream. Imagine that. Mance cream. Does Mance cream make your arms bigger or does it make the shirts smaller? Does it make your arms bigger or your shirt smaller? Because you know everybody. Oh, well, Mance cream's for everything. It does both. <laughs> it cures everything. It, it means, boys, hey, a referee that I've been riffing with at Richlands in the middle school, he got shingles. Okay. All right. He missed a week. Usually, you know, shingles, you're down for the count for yeah. a while. Oh, yeah. He was back within a week because he used Mance cream. Mance cream does it all. It shrinks the shirt and makes your muscles bigger. At the, both at the at same, same time. time. Well, that's, well, that's easy. Well, I, we should have known that the authority on match cream was going to get this one right. That's right. We should have known. But I have noticed that. You see all those boys running around. It looks like them shirts are like they're ready to bust out of them. You know how like, Hector looks over here all the time. <laughs> he, he's been using match cream for years. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, uh, uh, so that's the final answer. Final answer. Final answer. And it cures the shingles. Shingles. Who knows what Just else? Just in the summertime, what am I using match cream? Well, let's see, look how big you are just in the summertime. <laughs> mm -hmm. Works right. that quick. All right, we feel hey, you know, I got another question for oh. you. Uh -oh. I, I, I was having a conversation with somebody the other day, and uh, a stump to creek question they told me to ask you was how many times lately in the last two weeks you've been to see your mom, Dad? Twice. <laughs> that was an easy one. That was an easy uh, one. Twice. <laughs> I uh, went. I went the other spot. day. They wasn't home. I had to get the Dang. kids. <laughs> if they're not home, it don't count. Do I've been the same times as they've been to my house. <laughs> there, there you go. So Easy that, answer. That Easy. No, that ain't Good. a stunt. No, that's a good one. That's a good one. I'm being You're shame yourself, man. Uh, all right, folks. We failed once again to stump the creek on two questions. On two questions today. All right, and with that being said, we're going to take a quick break, and we'll be back in just a second with our Dodson's IGA Top 5. Welcome back to the show. Thanks to Dotson's IGA, located in Hurley, Virginia. Fruit trays, vegetable trays, meat trays, sandwich trays, you name it, they've got them for whatever event that you're going to host. Don't forget, they've got a wide selection of groceries, produce, and of course, the best meat selection in town. Stop by and check them out. Dotson's IGA, located in Hurley, Virginia. Boys, and there's one thing you can do over at the poles at, Rich, uh, at Hurley, they gave free bologna sandwich out and that meat came from IGA because you can't beat their meat. Team four on that one. All right. Well, gentlemen, last week uh, we uh, got our top five. I'm trying to pull them out here. All right. Who wants to go first? I ain't ready. Oh, you still ain't ready? ready. Still shut well, up. I am ready as usual. I did my preparation. This is the final top five. Final top five of the season. <clears throat> Pistol, do you have the clock ready? You have 90 seconds to make an argument for our top five. I'll go first. I'll start with 2A. 2A, number five. Coming in at number five for the uh, final, five A, uh, final top five of the season for me, Big R. I got Rich Lands at number five. Uh, coming in at number four, I've got their opponent for this week, Central Wise, coming in at number four. And number three, I've got the Ridgeview Wolfpack. Uh, number three, uh, and number two, the Union Bears, and number one, in 2A, I have the Graham G-Men. G-Men. <clears throat> Moving over to 1A, 
Number, my number five team in 1A, I have J.I. Burton, the Raiders, uh, finishing the season red hot. Uh, number four, I've got the Chilhai Warriors. And number three, I've got the Nars Green Wave. And with the big win this week, I moved Patrick Henry up to number two. And Malibu Mark and his gang. And then I've got number one, Galax Maroon Tide. That rounds out my top five on both sides. Coming in at one minute and one second. That's worth 20,000 points for me right there. Who wants to go next? I'll go next. All right. This will be very interesting. Well, I'm doing my formula real quick here. <laughs> You want me to go while you're done your formula? Yeah, I'm not ready. All right. In my 1A poll, number five, like you said, I got the red hot J.I. Burton Raiders coming in at number five. Number four, I got Chill Howie sliding back to number four spot. Number three, I got Kelly Lowe's Narrows Green Wave and could possibly see them in the region championship against Galax. And number two, I still got Malibu Marks Patrick Henry Rebels at number two. And congrats to him on a 10 and old season. Uh, number one, without a doubt, and I told you all along, they would be in the top one or two in the, in the 2D, is the Galax Maroon Tide. Uh, they will roll on. And number five in my 2A, I got Travis Turner's Union Bears coming in at number five. Mm. See, boys, y'all had them up there all year. Number Don't four. Know where I got them. Number four. <laughs> I got Coach Krieger's Big Blue Wind Machine, the Richlands Blue Tornadoes. And at number three, I have their opponent this week, which is the Central Wise Warriors coming in at number three. And number two is still the Ro Rose Ridge Ridgeview Wolfpack at number two. Well, you had three times. Rose, Rose, Rose Ridge Ridgeview Wolfpack. Pretty good. <laughs> And at number one, without a doubt, is Tony Palmer's Graham G Man. All right, you know what? You and I had this exact same Imagine top that. five and one eight. Imagine and that. we just had two teams Imagine split in two that. eight. Uh, Union and uh, somebody. Rich Lance. Yeah. So uh, great minds think alike. One twenty-two. That, you come in under the ninety-second mark. That's worth at least five thousand points right there. All right. All right, boys. My 1A, Burton at number five, Chilhowie at number four, Patrick Henry at number three, Galax at number two, and I'm still going with the Narrows Green Wave to pull the upset off in the region 1D finals, or 1C, 1C. finals, to be the team to come out of uh, that region. Absolutely not. I'm just, well, we'll see. <laughs> We'll see. I know they're banged up right now, but they're supposed to get some now, players back. Nice taking away from Kelly Lowe and them, but I just think uh, Galax is It is, and they're good, but, you know, they're there all the time. But, you know, like we talk, every five or six years a team yeah. comes along and it's their time. I just feel like it's Narrows' time right now, and they might pull it off. Uh, nothing, like you said, Galax is the team to beat, and I think they might have it. That no, one night. Now you, now you went to mine. That one night. No, I said that one night. They gonna get them. All right. Division two, boys. Two A. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Number five or six, ever how you want to look at it, boys. The Union Bears. There, boys, they're in. Three. Same place that you all got. So, so, so all that stuff you gave me all year, you all got them at the same place as I got them. Down there at the bottom. <laughs> All right. Number four. I got the Great City Blue Devils, boys. And I think they play... Uh, Union. Union so, and... It ain't going to happen. Boys, yeah, I'm just happen. telling you, that ball game, if each team runs the ball like they're capable of running, it could be 14-7. No. It's going to be close. No. It's going to be close. Is it... I think it's at Union Nation, ain't it? Then they're going to kick off, and then it'll be all, Maybe. all, all Poly Express. Maybe. It could be. But I got Great City there at five or four. four. Three, I got the Ridgeview Wolfpack. I playing pretty good ball right now, but not playing good enough ball to be in front of Y Central that I got at number well, two or three, whatever <laughs> it comes up up here in a minute. And my ones... I got 
the formula still stays the same, boys. I got the big R and the Graham G men at number one. So what you're saying is they're going to be playing each you, other. You really think Graham's the best team, but there's no way you could do Mance that way. You're not going. The, to well, the Mance cream way. got me jerking. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, a jerk. Like it comes up in my brain, and that's <laughs> uh, you don't, do not inhale Mance cream, kids. <laughs> that's I, I would highly recommend that. That's All right, so we got the big R and Graham at number one. I feel like they're going to be playing for the region championship, and boys. So hold on, you done made your pick. You don't even have pick this week. I don't. That's there who I go. think's going to be in the final. Luke, Luke. Oh man. You're gonna do something with your QB over here. I know, boys. I hate it, and you know, uh, we'll talk about year. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk. You we'll, had ninety seconds to do it, and you come in ninety five <laughs> seconds over. Or no, wait a minute. Sorry, yeah, fifty five seconds. <laughs> fifty five. Come uh, in fifty five seconds or minus twenty thousand points. Uh, All right. Me. All right. Well, that's our final top five uh, for this year. It's all playoff time now. Uh, we'll come back in just a minute with our special playoff edition and go through the brackets here. Be back right after these messages. All right, folks, welcome back to the show. It's now time for our Buchanan General Hospital Pigskin Prognostications, special playoff edition uh, of uh, uh, the Buck General Picks. And uh, we're going to start things off with Region 1D. First round game, fellas, coming up. Uh, talk a little bit about it. Uh, we got a Holmaker 5-5, five five, Patrick, Patrick Henry 10-0. Henry, <clears throat> that game will be at Emory & Henry at 7 p.m. That's right, they're going to play at Emory, 7 o'clock. Mm. Uh, Honecker 5-5, five five, PH 10-0. These two teams have already met once in the regular season, and PH uh, pretty much uh, controlled uh, the game from start to finish, and I don't think anything's going to change here. Uh, Honecker, BDD the camps. Um, the Honecker's going to be playing on turf, which is something that they are more familiar with, but I just don't think it's going to have any outcome of the game. So I'm going to pick PH in this one. They play on turf, but I think they're a grass team. Think so. The way they're built. Yeah, well, that's true. I, <laughs> that's I, could, I could agree with that. Uh, what, if anything, would Honecker need to do to win this ball game? Play really good defense. I mean, <laughs> gonna have really to, you have to stop yeah. the pH run in order yeah. to be successful, and uh, that's going to be a hefty task the way that they just come at you. you know, and Honecker, you know, I mean, you know, if they were able to control the ball and the clock, uh, and keep PH off the field, uh, you know, they might have a chance, but I just don't see it. Yes, and but. Well, we got to analyze and this, so. And nuts. I understand that, uh, but uh, we got to play the scenarios out. What does PH have to do? Just do what they you do. Know, do what they do. Do what they do. Stop. I think you know, Trevor Dye is a heavy part of Homemakers' offense, and they key in on Trevor Dye and, and stop him. They'll be all right. But you got Hubbard on the other hand. Uh, that can, that can break loose too. So, Here's, will Homemaker play them better this time than they did the first time? I think they're about the same. Okay. Melt the same. Same old song and dance. All right. So hey, we got, it is what it is. Jimmy's and Joe's. <laughs> so we got PH across the board, right? Yes. All right. Now up next. Is uh, this going to be Hubbard's last one? That's what the question will be. Um, I, think I think so. That could be a big talk. Discussion next. for next week, I think. Uh, All right, big talk it yeah. is. I think we can earmark that. Try to get some scoops if we can uh, between now and then. All right, next big game coming up is uh, Castlewood. J.I. Burton, Castlewood, six and four. J.I. Burton, eight and two. Uh, this is a seven o'clock game also uh, on Friday night. Uh, what are your thoughts on this, Coach? Well, Castlewood is one of the most improved teams in the area. And they had them 7 6 at halftime the last game they played. I think this is going to be a tough game. I think it's going to be a 28 14 game. I still think Norton's got too much for them. But what'd you say? Jimmy, Jimmy and, and Joe. Jimmy and Joe's. 
Uh, they just got too many. They, I'm gonna say 28-14, but a closer closer game than what it was in the regular season. Well, I think Burton. It's at Burton. Burton is is red hot. I mean, have they not won eight straight? If it's not eight, it's like seven. I know they're on a long yeah. winter streak. Um, that's going to carry in. Plus the fact that it's at Burton, playoff atmosphere. They're used to being there. You've got to give Burton the nod in in this game, but. Uh, I got I got to agree with you. I think Castlewood's going to keep it interesting for a while, but I just think Burton has just got too much. Burton, Burton across the board. Burton. Burton. But congratulations! I mean, to get to this point for Castlewood, because I don't think anybody had them oh, no. being this high of a seed that they are. No, All right? Don't congratulate them yet. Congratulate them next week because they might win. No, I'm just doing that because I mean nobody had them even making the playoffs. Who Castlewood? I yes, did. I did. When I seen them at Twin Valley scrimmage. Suddenly, boys, we run a lofter connection here. All right, and next we've got uh, Thomas Walker, six and four, at Chill Howie, eight and two. This is also a Friday night game. It's uh, seven o'clock kickoff. Thomas Walker uh, seems to be you know, going into the playoffs not the way that you'd want to go. You know, uh, not playing their best football at this time could be a result of uh, some injuries or something, but. Uh, Chill Howie with a big win over Holston there, 30 unanswered points. Come in back, man. Um, might have been just a little bit of a wake-up call for Chill Howie, but uh, they responded well. I just don't see Thomas Walker coming into this game and, and being able to pull it off. Uh, I think Chill Howie's got this, especially home field and the atmosphere that they've been having the last few years there with uh, playoff games is going to give them a huge edge. Not, not even considering the fact that I think they've probably got the better football team. Yeah, um, Tom, Thomas Walker don't have anything for Chill Howie. Like I said, there's only one team that's beat Chill Howie, or two teams since uh, them making the finals last year, and that's Narrows and Patrick Henry. Yeah. I'm going to go with uh, Chill Howie on this one. Going with Chill Howie, but congratulations to Nick, congratulations to Nick Johnson for another, for another winning season and, and making the playoffs. It. Making it another week. All right. Uh, and then we do have a Saturday uh, first round game. So a lot of people enjoy Saturday uh, high school football. I know myself, I love it. Uh, you got Holston 6 and 4, East Side 5 and 5. This is going to be a darn good one. 1 30 kickoff, and this is at East Side. Best game on the docket, I'll tell you what. Yeah, this one's going to be a good one, I think. Uh, I'm not going to go, good ball, to go uh, first. I'm, go I'm going with East Side. I know Holston's the hottest team, but. Like Coach Tester said earlier, East Side's uh, got a big piece of their puzzle back uh, from injury, and it's going to be a good ball game, but I think East Side will squeak it out there at the end. So you're calling for the upset on that. What about you? You go. Oh, okay. I've, I've, uh, well, upset, I've, it's at East Side, ain't it? Yeah, it's at East so, Side, but they're 5-5 five and five and Holston 6-4, oh. and four and East Side has just, as of recently, gotten a little hot. That's right. So I'm, I would consider that. Uh, you know, I've kind of leaned, uh, we've kind of, everybody's bet against Holston all year long, and Holston can continue to surprise them. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say Holston uh, holds serve here and wins this ball game. All right. Guys, like I said, I think this is a, this is a really good matchup. Uh, Eastside's got the wilded kid back, which is a, a big difference for them. Uh, you know, I know Holston and uh, uh, did a, had a great season, done a good job, and one of the hottest teams around. Uh, but I think with Grayson Whited back, or I, I think it's it. his name, I know with Whited back, and I want to pick Holston, but I think I'm going with Mike Rhodes and Reggie since the ball and that crew, and uh, at home, and they had a big win last week, and uh, I'm going to roll with these side Spartans. All right. Keep that well, the, win the winner of that game, uh, the winner of the Holston East Side game gets the winner of the Patrick Henry Homemaker game. And uh, the one that intrigues me is the matchup uh, in that middle bracket there with Castlewood, Burton winner, playing the winner of uh, Chill Howie, Thomas Walker. And we're saying it's going to be Chill Howie and Burton. Chill Howie beat Burton earlier this year. This is a different Burton team. So uh, it could be a really good matchup going in if uh, things work out the way we say they are. All right, uh, let's jump over to Region 2D, take a look at that uh, schedule. And first round matchup on Friday night, 7 p.m. kickoff. We've got 3-7 and seven Marion uh, at Ridgeview, which is 8-2. and two. 
And uh, fellas, I think this one's going to be over with first quarter. First series. First Kick series, off. possibly. Uh, I just I don't think Marion uh, Marion's not playoff caliber material right now. Mm -hmm. They're they're still in the growing pains. Ridgeview is more uh, jacked up and ready for it. And uh, I think it's uh, going to be a heavy dose of that can die there. It'll be bad. Uh, Ridgeview uh, gets to rest some people for the next week. I mean, Marion dropped 40 some on them in the first period the other night. Now, just think about that. Marion dropped 40. I mean, excuse me, not Marion, but uh, Graham dropped 40 some on Marion in the first period. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I tell you, it's going to be it's going to be tough for Murray and a long road trip for them back home. Yeah. Uh, across the board, then we're we're green yeah, on that. All right, and then uh, next uh, big matchup, 7 p.m. kickoff time. Richland six and four traveling to Wise Central eight and two. This is going to be a good one, boys. And I'm going to go ahead and throw it out. Jerky there. man scream out there, big dog. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be your old school lineman that block for you, or is it going to be your hero? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Boy, tough. Man, get mad at tough. I just, mm. <laughs> boys, I've said it all year. You didn't want to play them. That's true. And it's a tough matchup for anyone, just like, I mean, they went into Ridgeview last year and knocked off the Wolfpack. They did. So, I met the Wise team our Friday. I mean, and, you know, I got threatened a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm going to stick with my guns this year. I mean, Wise, great team, hot team, and got everybody back next year. Wise has everybody back next year. Listen, there, he's stuttering and everything. Oh, he's scared to death. Just, <laughs> he's scared. Boys, I mean, I got to gotta stay with it. I Spit mean, out. you all have to agree that um, – I mean, boys, you didn't want the matchup. You wanted to. The... There ain't no easy matchup. No, there's no, no, there's not. So I'm going with the big R, boys. Big R. Well, I, I will say this now, and I hope you know, I hope I'm wrong. But, uh, Richlands is a visiting team, and I would not be surprised. And why Central? This is this is basically calling your fans out. I wouldn't be surprised if there's more people from Richlands there than there will be from Wise. Richlands travels exceptionally well, and if they have that. They can take your field and make home field advantage out of it. Uh, if they do, and with the experience they've had in the past and the upset that they pulled last year, we know they're perfectly capable of doing it. Um, but I think that Richlands has an Achilles heel. And I'm going to tell you what it is. The Wayne T. And we're going to find out if that's true or not uh, Friday night, but I'm going with Y Central. Good call, man. Good call. Huh. <laughs> Well, we know guys, we know pick. we we know we always we said Krieger said it that 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 Richlands is a team that's that's playoff ready that you don't want to play. But guess what? You got to play them sometime. You're gonna have to play them sometime. So uh, might as well be first. Yeah, I think this is a good matchup. Like I said, Greg Mance is is one of the best, if not the best, around here. Uh, he's gonna be ready. He knows. He already knows where we're weak at. He knows he knows what he's got to do. But guess what? He can't go run it. He can't go block nobody. He can't catch it. It's going to have to be the kids to win the ball game. And uh, I think what we got to do is control the uh, control the control the ball, control the line of scrimmage. I think that's been keep them off the field because that's our best defense. And if we can get if we can pound the ball and get four or five yards here and there and, and keep the chains moving, I think is what we got to do. And we got to be disciplined enough on defense to we know they're going to make plays. We know they're going to throw the ball around. Uh, keep them in front of us and not let them have too many big plays. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you, we want to keep that. We don't want to get in a shootout with them. We want to keep the score, you know, close and hopefully our line and <clears throat> hopefully our, our guys up front will win the football game. And, I'm and you know, that's true. Going with Central Wise. That's right. And you're saying it the best there. Uh, two out of the four teams, I guess, or maybe on their losses are wing team, wing T teams. Yeah. First of the year, Gate City gets them. Lines up in the wing T, runs it out. Uh, Union. That's T. That same difference. It's a all the same. Mystery, a lot of misdirection. Yeah, it's all the same when you got there. And you know, a lot different though. Yeah. And we'll just, we'll see. Like I said, I'm just going on it. Experience. 
I agree with you. It's, it's and a, it's going to be tough out. it's uh, going to be a good game. And best of luck to both teams. And if, like I said, if Luke and Al, and Big Luke and Wise pulls it off, I'll be just as happy with that. I will the Big R boys. Well, is it would is it safe to say that Rich Land's coming in at six and four is not the underdog, even though Wise is eight and two? You know, I don't think you can go by records on this. Unless you talk about underdog. Especially in two A. You know, Central is mostly sophomore oriented. Yeah, got a couple of juniors, a couple of seniors, but they're mostly a bunch of sophomores. Man's experience with the with the playoffs and what he's done is just, you know, phenomenal over at Richlands. And I think Y Central's the underdog. I, I do too. I, I think Y Central's the underdog. I, I Regardless whether they're playing at home. I but playing they're... the best ball. Wise is playing, playing, playing the best ball. ball. All right, well, we've got uh, Richlands and then on your side, Big R and both of us have got Wise. All right, next we've got uh, another 7 p.m. kickoff. Gate City, four and six at Union, eight and two. Nation, baby. You talk about a game going to be packed out. Oh, yeah. But the Polier Express will rise to the occasion. I think Union wins. Great City's had a pretty good year, and they've played hard up to this. I mean, I just feel like Union beats them. I feel like Gate City is like Union is up on this step, Gate City's on this step, getting ready to take that step. But I think that step's next year, Gate City. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Union as well. I agree. I think the uh, the loss to the Central Wise Warriors for the Union Bears was a, uh, a wake up wake call. up call for them, yeah. and I think they will respond and uh, will win. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if Gate City. I think Gate City can keep it within three scores, but I think Union is gonna be ready to play, and I think they coach Travis Turner and them will be ready and come out with as a winner on this. So that'll be a good environment to go watch a ball game. Bullet Park, you got that Gay City crowd coming. That's going to be really good. But you know, I'm, congratulations I'm, to Coach House. Right? I mean, nobody was even talking about Gay City last year or no, anything. No. And now uh, they've knocked off, like I said earlier, near the big R and just. Well, they're perfectly capable. Yes. They're a scary team. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Saturday, we got one Saturday game as well. Seven and three Taswell traveling to the Jeebird. Eight and two. Mm -hmm. It's a one o'clock game. Uh, hey, I've always been a Taswell fan. I told you since they had this little run going with these, yeah. these athletes, but yeah. they got two of them. Seven and three guys is not bad for them, but they're not on this level yet. I think is if they can come out and play well in this game, it'll be a win for them. If they oh, can I just play so well. They're not going to win. But I think if they play well in this game, that is a big win for. Uh, I think it'll be, I think it'll be a really good crowd for that ball game. Yeah, and uh, uh, I'm going with G Men in this one. I just think, that, you know, like you said, I think Taz will not be an up and coming team, but I don't think they've yet they've yet arrived. Right. And I, I think I think Graham has, and Graham has that experience and the expectation level that anything short of a state championship is going to be. Uh, Boys, I, I, not a good season, so I think Graham's going to roll. I've been watching film on, on Graham and, and Richlands. I watched Richlands go, and I watched Graham. And I tell you what, for anybody to run the football on Graham with those two linebackers, they got to be lower. I mean, the 33 and 54 is a real deal for Graham G. Man. And, uh, um, you know, anybody's got their work cut out for them to go through Graham. So, something y'all mentioned earlier, I want to call the Wise County Central fan base out. Coach Moore just called you guys out a while ago, saying Richlands was going to outnumber the Wise County Central fans. So, Wise County, get your hind ends out of the game on Friday night. I say it'll be packed. It'll be there's a lot of the people. I think in Buchanan County might be loading up and going over, and I think it'll be packed out. It'll be good atmosphere for a football game. It should be a good game. Uh, real quick recap on our totals. Uh, I've completely went a wash here. I'm 92 and 38. Went nine and five last week. Coach Krieger 14 and 0 last week. Congratulations on that. 14 and 0. Messed up one or something. He's at 101 yeah. uh, and 29. Like he did. Uh, and uh, Coach Tester 13 and one. 
and he too is 101 and 29. You know what that's coming down to? Yeah. Central wide. Somebody's going to wear the crown. Regular season's over. Somebody's going to wear the crown, boys. Zero, zero. Now, so we're tied at the end of the regular season, and uh, now the playoffs begin. So uh, somebody's going to wear the crown. Who's it going to be? We'll have to wait and see, but we're getting closer every day. There, if, if, if I get to wear the crown this week, no more man's cream. Right? That's a fact. <laughs> Mance cream will be disregarded. I don't believe that. It'll pop back up. It'll, it'll pop back up. <laughs> All right. I don't have anything else, you guys. Well, I got uh, one thing here. We uh, uh, Congratulations and uh, shout out to Ian Scammell, uh, freshman. Uh, 1,409 yards this season. That's awesome. That's, that's pretty good. That's a good year. Congratulations to Ian Scammell. So we just played against him uh, yeah. this week. You know, I said we played against him this week. And uh, to be, what is he, 13, 14 years old, and to be able to run some of the things I've seen him doing at that runs age. Runs hard. Runs hard. He's going to be a pretty good football player. All right. Congratulations to Ian. Anything else? I'll be all bulls. All right. I don't have anything else. You don't have nothing. Good to go. Till next time, I'm Coach Moore. Coach Tester. Coach Krieger. We're out here.